All right, welcome to this course on statistical signal processing. This course presents the main principles and tools in statistical inference that are uh, required by uh, practitioners and researchers in uh, computer science, electrical engineering, economics, and in general in any discipline that involves learning from data, control, estimation, signal processing, sensing, and so on. So what is inference? Uh, the word comes from Latin and means to lead in or into, um, essentially to draw consequences or conclusions uh, in, in this context from um, data. So to see the uh, Mm, wide scope of this concept, uh, let's think that pretty much uh, any task uh, we wish to carry out uh, involves using uh, the information that we observe from the uh, real world to uh, make decisions and act uh, accordingly, right? So in this context, the, uh, an important part is the inference step. Uh, which makes sense out of this uh, information. And we are uh, doing this uh, continuously and even unconsciously. Uh, for instance, uh, your ears are now, or your brain is now decoding the pressure waves uh, sensed by your ears uh, to uh, extract the words that uh, I am saying, or your visual uh, system is now interpreting the uh, this uh, slide right and the, and the different parts and, and, and so on but um, data standalone uh, does not generally suffice to uh, interpret uh, what is uh, going on uh, here uh, we need to combine what uh, we observe uh, with uh, what we know and that is precisely what uh, inference uh, deals with uh, so, for example, uh, your brain cannot uh, decode the words that I'm saying if it doesn't know the words uh, beforehand, or your visual system cannot uh, interpret the light signals it is and your eyes are uh, receiving uh, if it doesn't know what is a computer screen or what is a slide or how uh, words uh, look like. So, we have two ingredients to discuss today. One is data, the other is prior knowledge. So data is a broad concept that uh, comprises essentially uh, whatever information that can be represented by uh, number, numbers, vectors, matrices, images, strings, uh, text, uh, voltage, acoustic pressure, whatever thing, right? And uh, signals uh, is a word uh, typically reserved for data that can that are indexed by uh, a variable that uh, quantifies uh, time or frequency or space uh, there are even uh, signals uh, defined on graphs so for those of you that haven't been exposed to signal processing <clears throat> this is an example of an analog signal in the time domain which uh, provides the value of a certain uh, magnitude such as uh, voltage, uh, light intensity, acoustic pressure uh, for every um, value, for every time instant, right? And this is uh, therefore uh, mat uh, represented mathematically using a function. And these sort of signals emerge, for example, when we used to record audio uh, in, on tapes, right? But uh, in practice, in, in modern days, uh, we don't uh, really deal with analog signals or don't usually do it uh, because they are uh, cumbersome with, uh, uh, to manipulate. So instead, we just record the values that the signals, uh, the analog signals take at a finite set of uh, time instants. We obtain in this way a sequence of uh, samples rather than uh, a function of time. So uh, a signal of this kind is called a discrete time signal and it doesn't provide the value of the, uh, of the 
actual uh, the magnitude that is quantifying uh, between each pair of uh, consecutive uh, samples. However, strictly speaking, a computer cannot uh, handle this kind of signals because it cannot accommodate arbitrary values for the samples. Uh, in other words, uh, there is a, a finite uh, set of uh, possible values that a sample can take. Uh, this means that uh, the, this, these signals are quantized not only uh, horizontally but also uh, vertically and are called uh, digital signals. However, this uh, degree of complexity introduced by the vertical uh, quantization is uh, seldom take, uh, taken into account. In practice, we will be thinking of uh, discrete time signals. And this, the focus of this course will be on uh, general data. So, uh, for instance, just uh, um, a data set that provides the weight and uh, height of uh, collection of uh, humans uh, to uh, signals, and specifically uh, discrete time uh, signals. So we discussed uh, data. Now let's uh, briefly touch upon uh, how to uh, leverage uh, prior knowledge to make sense out of data. Uh, the way we have to capture prior knowledge is um, by means of uh, a model. A model is an abstract uh, representation of some uh, phenomenon, uh, typically in, in reality. Uh, an example could be, uh, uh, for instance, a model of, of a car uh, where uh, given the throttle, the gear and the slope of the, of the uh, road, it provides the, the speed, right? or in communications one may use a model where the receive signal equals an attenuated version of the transmit signal plus perhaps some uh, white noise. I'm here of course neglecting some uh, phenomena like delay or uh, multipath for simplicity. Uh, other examples of model would be in uh, uh, signal in speech signal processing where a Markov chain for instance can be used to uh, model a sequence of uh, phonemes, words uh, and, and, and so on. So the problems, the inference problems uh, that one can uh, solve in these situations may be for instance given the throttle gear and slope predict what will be the speed or given the received signal and the attenuation estimate the transmit signal or uh, given a speech uh, signal uh, like a recorded uh, audio from somebody speaking uh, estimate what is the sequence of words that are being pronounced and this is the problem solved essentially I mean, by uh, Siri and Cortana and things like that right so whenever we need to uh, solve an inference problem uh, we uh, need to uh, decide how much we trust uh, our uh, observations and how much we trust our prior knowledge, right? And this is something that we uh, humans uh, unconsciously do, uh, instinctively uh, do. So uh, suppose, for instance, that uh, you see a white uh, shape or um, body in, far away from you and that you are in the... Um, perhaps in a, in a city or in a rural area. Uh, you will probably uh, conclude that uh, that is a, a, a car, right? Uh, however, if you are in the middle of the desert and you see the same object at the same distance, uh, you will not probably conclude that is, uh, that is a car. You would need to approach it and get uh, very close to it until you can actually appreciate the the details, the wheels, and, and so on, uh, before you conclude that it is a, a car, right? So you are always balancing how much you trust your prior knowledge and uh, observations. And this is uh, something that we need to address in statistical inference, although uh, we have to do it uh, systematically, right? Not uh, instinctively. 
so uh, within uh, the there are uh, some disciplines that uh, lie or prefer to lie more to the model side of this spectrum so for example uh, in physics one may be interested in predicting the pressure <coughs> of a gas given the volume uh, temperature and number of uh, moles uh, that in that case uh, one can use this uh, ideal uh, gas uh, law or one may be interested in predicting the acceleration of a, of a particle uh, in a, of a charged particle in an electric field and then one can use the laws of uh, electromagnetism uh, on, on the other hand, uh, there are other uh, applications that, uh, uh, or, or, or disciplines that prefer to lie on the uh, data-driven or model-free uh, side of this spectrum, right? Uh, because uh, models are uh, not, uh, or accurate models are not available. So suppose, for instance, that one wants to classify images as containing cats or containing dogs. There's no uh, um, way to accurately uh, model uh, those um, those uh, images, right? Uh, I mean, at least that uh, we know. Uh, and therefore, the approach that is uh, pursued here is typically to um, uh, learn how those kind of uh, those kinds of images uh, look uh, from uh, a data set of uh, images, right? Uh, the uh, model-based uh, um, approaches uh, are uh, preferable typically when we have uh, little data or when we have uh, accurate prior knowledge. So, for instance, uh, Newton's laws are uh, very uh, accurate uh, for a wide range of uh, masses, uh, uh, right? And on the other hand, uh, the model-free approaches are uh, good when we have uh, plenty of data. So, for instance, in, in machine learning nowadays, uh, one may use a, a data set with uh, millions of images, right? or when the prior knowledge is uh, inaccurate. So, for instance, in this case of the, the cats and dogs. So, in practice, uh, when we have to solve a problem, uh, our situation, we will be standing uh, somewhere between these two extremes. So, we will have some data, perhaps not too much, not too little. And we will have also uh, some prior knowledge, perhaps not too accurate or not too uh, inaccurate. So we will need to find what's the sweet spot between these uh, extremes. And this is precisely the, uh, uh, the goal of this course. So as uh, you can see, the mm, journey where we are embarking on is uh, quite uh, important. This course will lay the foundations of statistical learning uh, with focus on estimation theory and uh, detection theory, also known as or uh, related to hypothesis testing and uh, classification. It is recommended to uh, read selected chapters from uh, the books by K in parallel to the video lectures and a practice will take place uh, through uh, problems and uh, computer assignments. Uh, the organization is detailed on uh, Canvas. Uh, I just point out here that uh, the homework load will be roughly uh, one problem per week. And the, there are multiple uh, grading options. All right, I'll see you in next video.